Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. As more people are admitted into the webinar room, we would just like to acknowledge uh, our participants in this uh, event and forum. So we'd like to thank the students and faculty members from different state uh, universities and colleges and higher educational institutions. Uh, we'd also like to thank officials and employees from various uh, government agencies in uh, Eastern Visayas. And uh, surprisingly and gladly, we also have uh, doctors to the barrio and other medical professionals attending the forum, also from various parts of the region. Ladies and gentlemen, the Philippine National Anthem. Welcome to this online anniversary program of the UP Tacloban Leyte Samar Heritage Center. The center is the research and extension arm of UP Tacloban and it is mandated to develop and conduct research, creative works, extension and public service projects related to the cultural and natural heritage of Eastern Visayas. This month, uh, the Late Asamar Heritage Center is celebrating its 26th founding anniversary with the theme, Porta, Pathways to Promoting Cultural, Historical, and Environmental Awareness in Eastern Visayas. Porta uh, takes inspiration from the heritage door of the LSHC building created by visual artist Archie Zabala. The door features a relief sculpture uh, showing the unique flora and fauna, history, and cultural objects and practices of Eastern Visayas. The door is a metaphor for establishing continuities, uh, man building pathways and, and opening up opportunities in our collective work of preserving the natural and cultural heritage of Eastern Visayas. Now, the conversation and forum this afternoon Bongto, the transfer of Leyte Center from Carigara to Tacloban in the 19th century, is one of the activities for LSHC's anniversary celebration. It is also an episode in the Kaagi Kabilin Kultura, History, Heritage, Culture, Conversation Series by Bati UP Tacloban, the college's internet community radio. In this conversation and forum, we have four interlocutors discussing the transfer of the center of Leyte from Carigara to Tacloban and the formation of Bungtos or towns in the island in the 19th century. The discussion is based on the 2014 essay published in the Philippine Social Sciences Review entitled Leyte sa Dantaon, Labing Siam, Pagtukoy ng Kabisera at Pagbuo ng Mga Bagong Bungto, written by Dr. Ross A. Costello 
who is one of our interlocutors. In, in fact, our main featured uh, guest interlocutor this afternoon. Dr. Ross A. Costello is a historian and faculty member of UP Diliman's Department of History. In 2012, she completed her Master of Arts in History at the University of the Philippines, where she did her thesis entitled Kinaagi Hanleite, Creation of a Province 1565 to 1898. Early this year, she graduated with a doctorate degree in contemporary history from the prestigious Universidad Complutense de Madrid in Spain and received the mark of sobresaliente cum laude, which is the highest possible recognition that can be conferred by the Spanish educational system. Her dissertation is entitled Public Works and the Spanish Colonial Agenda of Sanitation, Order, and Social Control in the late 18th to 19th century Manila. Since 2017, Dr. Costello has been a research affiliate at the Instituto de Historia, Centro de Ciencias Humanas y Sociales Consejo Superior de Investigaciones Científicas in Spain. She is a project member of, among other past and ongoing research projects, the Philippines 1565 to 1898, which is a multi-volume project of the University of the Philippines to commemorate the 500th anniversary of Magellan's arrival in the Philippines and the beginning of Philippine-Spanish relations. We also have another interlocutor, Professor Dakila Kim P. Yi, who is Assistant Professor of Sociology at the University of the Philippines Visayas Tacloban College. His research is on the urban political ecology of disaster reconstruction in the Philippines after Typhoon Haiyan and critical environmental conservation studies. He is part of the 2016 Asian Graduate Student Fellowship Program at the Asia Research Institute, National University of Singapore, and he is a recipient of the 2017 Research Grants Program of the Strengthening Human Rights and Peace Education in Southeast Asia ASEAN Program based at Mahetol University, Thailand. His research appears in the following journals, Critical Asian Studies, Peace Review, and the Journal of Sociology. This afternoon, we will also be joined by two reactors. Uh, one of them is Dr. Rolando O. Borinaga, who, as many of us know, is the author of several books like The Balanghiga Conflict Revisited, which is finalist for the 2003 National Book Award in History, Leite Samar Shadows, Essays on the History of Eastern Visayas, Surat Binisaya, Deciphering Ancient Visayan Writing and Language, and co-translator slash co-editor with Father Cantius Kobak of The Colonial Odyssey of Leyte, 1521 to 1914. Uh, and this was a winner of, of the 2006 National Book Award for Translation. Dr. Borinaga is also a lifetime member of the Philippine National Historical Society, where he is also a member of the Editorial Advisory Board of the Journal of History. He is full professor at the School of Health Sciences, University of the Philippines, Manila, in Palo, Leyte. And finally, our other reactor is Monsignor Gilbert G. Urbina. Monsignor Urbina is the Vicar General at the Archdiocese of Palo. He graduated from the Sacred Heart Seminary in Palo with a degree in AB Philosophy and went on to study theology at the University of Santo Tomas in Manila. Monsignor Urbina also studied liturgy at the Pontifical Institute of Liturgy in Anselmianum, Rome, and pastoral theology at Lateran University, also in Rome, Italy. He is currently the chair of the Worship Commission of the Archdiocese of Palo and professor of liturgy at St. John the Evangelist School of Theology in Palo, Leite. This online forum this afternoon will proceed this way. A pre-recorded conversation between Dr. Costello and Professor Yi will be presented in two parts. The first half of the conversation touches upon challenges 
inspirations, and opportunities in historical research, among others. The second half of the pre-recorded conversation elaborates on the factors that affected the transfer of latest center from Caregara to Tacloban and the formation of Bungtos in the island in the 19th century. After each part, our reactors, Dr. Rolando Borinaga and Monsignor Gilbert Urbina, will share their thoughts and or questions with uh, Dr. Costello and uh, Professor Yi. After all these, we will have an open forum where you, the attendees, may ask your questions or share your own thoughts about the discussion. Now, I believe we are ready to listen to the first half of the pre-recorded conversation between Dr. Ross Costello and Professor Dakila Yi. So, Dr. Costello, good afternoon. Mopay nga kulup mo, and uh, how are you all? Professor Yi, mopay nga kulup, mopay nga adlaw, um, hang nataran nga mga listeners and viewers natin. Yes, uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us and um, maybe uh, you can uh, share with us and to our listeners a bit uh, what uh, your um, your research was in, in Madrid and very interestingly, uh, why, why, why did you go to Madrid to do your, your doctorate degree? Okay. Uh, in 2014, I was given a research grant. It was a grant uh, given by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. It was for a six-month project, archival research project, no, to retrieve um, archival documents ng Pilipinas, no, uh, 16th to 19th century documents um, about the Philippines na nandito sa Spain, no? specifically sa uh, two state archives in Spain, yung Archivo General de Indias in Seville, and the Archivo Historico Nacional in Madrid. So for our um, um, listeners, para magka-idea kita, um, although we have a lot of archival documents in the National Archives of the Philippines, most of uh, our documents from the 16th to the, to the 19th centuries are actually here in Spain. There are, um, the the state, no, the condition of these documents, talagang they're well preserved and we can access all these documents. But of course, because of yung limitation ng language, um, guti ay laha ato nito na maaram, maaram in Spanish. Tapos, dire lahiya, um, question of um, acquiring the Spanish language. is It's also a question of um, acquiring skills no, in paleography, kay iba and documents, no, how they're written in the 16th century, iba in the 17th, iba ba in the 18th, iba in the 19th. So, bagan, uh, although damo ini nga mga documents nga uh, aniha Spain, diri tala underutilized ini nga mga documents kay um, damo an aton mga skills and resources na kailangan no, to access these um, uh, documents. So, it was in 2014 that I was given this um, opportunity. And then when I was here in 2014, uh, ito nga six months. Magan, um, di da ito na naganap, uh, di da ito na an, baga light bulb moment ha akon nga, maybe um, an akon talaga specialization na gusto nga iya uh, pursue ay um, the Philippines in the 16th and the 19th century, so Spanish colonial Philippines. And so when I was here in 2014, I was able to contact um some of the um Philippine Filipinistas, no Spanish um uh, scholars na talagang they're doing uh researches on about the Philippines. And so I was able to um get a um get support no from from these Filipinistas. And so in 2014, 2015, I uh six I one semester after Kubo Malik from that uh, research grant, I came back here in Madrid. I did my master's. It was a one-year master's program. I finished it in 2016. And then from 2016 to um, uh, early this year, no, because of the pandemic, medyo nag, nag extend, I did my PhD uh, here in Spain. My research is... Um, uh, during my master's and yung aking PhD, I medyo malayo doon sa una kong research interest. You know, when I was in my early years, during my early years no, ng aking 
uh, career in the academe, I was really into local history, specifically the local history of Leyte. But um, because of my research um, abroad here, no, nag-iba, nag-iba yung direction. I did, um, um, my dissertation is on the Spanish, well, how can um, public works, public works projects in the Philippines and the Spanish colonial agenda of sanitation, order, and control. So parang tinignan ko how the different public works projects were, became parang um, symbols no, of empire para ma, ma-pursue nila yung kanilang uh, colonial agenda ng sanitation, ng order, and control. So siguro yan ay separate na... Um, discussion. So yan yung aking um, ginagawa ngayon. But um, before this, before that, pre- pre-2014, I was really into local history, late, uh, local history of Leyte. So yun. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Costello. Um, that uh, research topic is uh, very, very interesting. And um, so we would segue to uh, the topic for this afternoon, uh, which is uh, in, uh, regarding your, your uh, article. Uh, Leyte sa Dantaon 19, Pagtukoy ng Kabisera at Pagbuo ng Mga Bagong Bungto, uh, which was published in 2014. For me, this is a very, uh, it's a great paper. Uh, it really fills a big gap, malaking uh, puwang, no, so to speak, sa ating uh, colonial historical knowledge, especially sa periphery, peripheral regions. So, uh, uh, what is uh, what is the inspiration for this particular research project? Uh, the the about um the yung paglipat o yung pagtransfer ng mga kabisera at mga bu- paggawa ng mga bungto in Leyte. Okay, so Professor, yung siguro I should I should mention that this article is a product, no? It's it's a product of my MA thesis in the University of the Philippines, Diliman, uh, which I defended in in 2012 so baga feeling ko i had to i had to publish something from that um from that uh, work no kasi iniisip ko dati maybe i could syempre yung mga grand ideas mo na pwede mo i-convert yung ma thesis mo into a book no pero madami kang madaming limitations so at the very least mag you know um get something from that work na mag maging ano siya maging article man lang siya no para mas ma-reach ang maraming readers natin. Kaya magpapa-disclaimer din ako ulit. I I already mentioned this a while ago na this research has been, you know, decades, parang one decade ago. <laughs> so talaga ang dami ko nang nakalimutan dito and also with um yung opportunity na nabigay sa akin uh, dito sa Spain, I was also able to discover new um new art- history han late and in summer medyo magkapareho magka 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 ugnay talaga magkadugtong no magkadugtong na magkadugtong but during that time when i was uh, writing uh, my dissertation and i was doing research my dissertation in late 2000s early 2010s ang available sources lang talaga na meron ako ay yung sources in the Philippines, in the National Archives of the Philippines. So, yun yung isang primary limitation ng aking pananaliksik, no? So, for for us uh, students of history, we're only limited with uh, the available sources that we have at that particular time. So, hopefully, pwede kong ma-update itong research na ito um, given the new sources and given the new knowledge that we have Um uh, tungkol sa local history ng Leyte. So yung inspiration, basically, it was my um, way no, of giving back. Kasi ano ko, uh, waray-waray gihapon. No? Uh, uh, I was born in a very small town, uh, Hatunga. No? So, um, tapos, talagang feeling ko, ay kinahanglan talaga, may edam masurat ako nga about about late no especially um when i was uh, in up diliman at that time our professors would encourage us no to write um local histories no uh, yan talagang isa sa mga pinopursu at that time no kasi ang, ang ang ating philosophy ang ating um under belief at that time is that for us to have a um 
complete understanding of, of our national history you know we have also we, we need to develop the local and regional histories you no know? so yan isa ko dyan sa mga yan yung aking parang contribution so parang gusto ko rin kihapon kay when I was also um studying pa hadon ako ng undergrad in UP Diliman guti ay la no guti ay la itong mga nasurat about late um so naisip ko Although, of course, meron ng works, um, sina Professors Burinaga, meron na rin mga na-publish, no, yung Colo- The Colonial Odyssey of Leyte, or even yung na-publish ni Cruikshank, no, on Samar. So, pero damo pa naman, kailangan nga ma- ma- may contribute, no. So, amutan ako ng inspiration, no, yung uh, kay ano nga nag-research uh, ako and nag-write ako about uh, the local history of Leyte. Um, for the for the benefit of our listeners and our viewers, um, let's uh, go to some uh, themes that uh, you discussed in your article. Um, your your paper uh, alluded that uh, Karigara, the neighboring town of Tunga, uh, was um, a very uh, central town. No, although uh, I don't remember na ni label mo siya as a capital of uh, Leyte. Uh, so I was wondering um uh what what uh, based on, on on research um ano yung centrality of of Karigara because um actually my mother is from Karigara so very ano sila uh, they are very well aware of their ano kumbaga positionality historical positionality <laughs> so I was wondering um what 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 um if if anything um a, 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 like a brief uh, history of of Karigara and and why why suddenly it shifted to the then fishing village of Kankabato, which is now Tacloban. Tacloban. Mm, taga Karagara ka pala, sir. <laughs> my oh, mother, my mother. Mm, ako din, parang feeling ko yung aking, you know, growing up, feeling ko my concept of, my first concept of what a center is ay Karigara. And then, ito nga siya yung periphery, di ba? Parang kung, yeah. parang kung may kailangan bilhin, may, may papaliton, karigara. Um, mga, di ba? Mga parang yung idea mo of a center, really. Amo ito na akong first idea of a center, you know, karigara. And really, uh, you're right, uh, Professor Yi, Tal- talagang un- undeniably, undoubtedly, no, karigara is one of the oldest settlements in Leyte, you know. As early as the 16th century, you have Father Pedro Cherino writing about karigara and even the mission Missionaries themselves, no? Diyan sila naglagay ng kanilang mga seat, no? Ng kanilang mga headquarters kung tutuusin yung kanilang, no? Ng kanilang missions. Um, you said a while ago na I didn't mention na it, um, hindi talagang, na hindi ko sinabi dun sa article na it was a capital. Um, it was a conscious uh, choice sa part ko because I was, I was looking for a primary source no a document na talagang you know talagang literal na sasabihin na you know um, la sede o la capital no de la provincia de Leyte es Karigara parang i was looking for that uh, document pero hindi ko hindi ko siya makita and then kailangan kong mag hindi ko rin ma-identify yung yung time yung specific time no so it was a religious center it also became you know socio economic even you can say political center but i had to look for a, a document no na mag-establish ng kanyang centrality no so um na i naalala ko lang yung isa sa mga pwede siguro hong, um yung interesting na 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 point also sa sa Karigara yung centrality niya as early as you know yung early years of the Spanish uh, colonization even yung uh, resistance movements no i don't know if you're familiar with um yung yung story of Bamkao no yung first di ba yung first um uh, stories ng mga ng uh, peasant movement or resistance movement supposedly si Bangkaw ay isang babaylan no na bailan katalonan yan yung uh, um, documentation sa um, mga early works ng mga misyonero natin kay, kay Cherino binanggit yan sa Blair and Robertson no the yung multi volume work ni na Blair at Robertson na nagpapakita ng iba't ibang mga sources during the Spanish period nakita yan so lagi 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 binabanggit talaga na ang Karigara yung isa sa mga naging sentro 
no nanjan nanjan yung mga misyonero nanjan ang mga lalo na yung mga Jesuits diyan sila nag uh, nag-establish ng kanilang center ng kanilang headquarters and um and politically um and, and uh, sorry and sa mga documents really Carigara would all you know will always be mentioned no sa lahat halos no ng ng mga documents during the the Spanish period even yung mga moral raids yung mga attacks isa yung Carigara sa mga mentioned so yung centrality na yan ng Carigara yung paulit-ulit na pagbanggit sa kanya no um is uh, proof enough no nung nung hal kahalagahan no nung 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 Carigara as a central territory no no in Leyte so siguro yun yung yun yung um pwedeng gap pero you know I w- when I was doing this research merong na publish about the local history of Carigara ang um, kailangan lang professor yi siguro maganda itong mga ganitong initiatives no na merong mga nasisimula na, na local history pero yung sources saan kinuha kasi minsan walang mga proper citation or footnoting pwede kasi ito siguro na you know unverified na mga halimbawa um alam mo yon yung mga data na na cite sa isang libro pero wala naman talagang citation so yeah, siguro yeah. yung tanggap na pwedeng uh, uh, mm-hmm. ayusin no ano yung mga sources na mm-hmm. nagpapa nag uh, you know nag uh, nagpapakita no ng uh, um, kung saan halimbawa ano yung naging basis ng ng uh, kanilang discussion about Carigara So yeah. Yeah, um well, m- minsan ano no some some sometimes uh the and and iba nga ning mga like the local folklore uh, suddenly become documented in official uh policy papers sa parang uh, history of this town and then but then yeah it uh, it makes sense yung ano animo na yapan nga uh danay um i direct conscious and 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 pag footnote and histo and and documentation and ar- archiving um siguro ano no um so to segue no um uh, of course in your article you talk about the reasons why uh, suddenly uh, an an naging sentro from the 19th century onwards um uh, became uh, takloban um uh, can can you share with our uh, viewers and listeners Uh, what 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 affected this uh, shift kay ano kay ano nabalhin and and recognition no uh, of of the central uh, town from from Carigara to Tacloban may may usal yes. ako nga disclaimer sir no um produkto ito hen limitation sa atin hen archives no even an atin mga archival documents di really what very clear kung kakan o unang naging gamit ang Tacloban as as the capital no as a center the political milit political military center no but for sure in the 19th century ang Tacloban na ang center pero kung kailan kung kakan o nagsimula question mark pa ito no i found a document in the Arch- uh, archivo general de indias in civil late 18th century they were talking about the yung um the possibilities of transferring um the capital to tacloban late 18th century na ito so pero hindi ko yan masyado nang tinignan kasi nga i was uh, busy with my other research projects and hopefully mabalikan ko adela hera na sent na, na naka nakapiliwala so kailangan la abrihan otro ngan basahon otro but definitely as early as the late 18th century it was already uh, you know uh, being talked about no and pag sin, pag kina, pag uh, na mention natin ng takloban nga nan late eh, diri talagang I have already mentioned this a while ago and history han late eh, talagang there's a very close uh, very close shared history with Samar kasi when Tacloban was um being mentioned madalas if not lagi na may mention gihapon ang Taklago Tacloban ay Katbalogan I'm sorry Katbalogan so other uh, key settlements also of um Samar no so kailangan if Also, you are um, if you want to um, do local history of Leyte, dapat ready ka na diri la Leyte, diri la geographic space and Leyte and willing ka na pag-aralan dapat pati Samar, no? Kay 
pasugad-sugad and era history, no? So, kumbaga, very fluid. It also speaks, it also reflects, no, yung fluidity of movement, no, yung mobility, not only of the natives, but also of, of the um, uh, colonial officials, no, religious and secular alike. Talaga makikita mo yung mobility, fluidity ng, ng mga tao within the two uh, islands, no? So that was the first half of the pre-recorded conversation. Now to share their thoughts and perspectives, let us welcome into the webinar room, um, Monsignor Gilbert Urbina and Dr. Rolando Borinaga. First to share his thoughts, uh, let's have Dr. Borinaga. Okay, uh, when I was uh, told about this consent, the initial, the the recorded uh, stuff uh, actually took uh, some notes uh, from uh, the still uh, unpublished part of uh, of uh, Artigas. That, so the colonial odyssey of Leyte was the, the general uh, history chapters. Uh, uh, the, the other half of that is actually uh, the municipal histories and uh, I, I I had actually already translated the the one for the all all the municipalities and the, for Tacloban actually uh, it was actually Kankabatok uh, the the name uh, was uh, Kankabatok uh, mm, Kankabatok was created as a pueblo as early as 1771 according to Cavada and then. Uh, so there, there, there's a, there are there are some documents that I look into here, and uh, uh, it seems that there there was uh, the Augustinians who replaced the the Jesuits did not like Carigara as the capital, so they had to to take some take some other town as capital, and apparently they settled in Palo and made made it their capital. Uh, but uh, in 1777, uh, Dr. Tomas Poliquita had received orders to construct uh, Casa Real and the uh, quartels in Carigara as capital. But then in 1774, when uh, the governor was Don Juan uh, Hipolito Gonzalez, uh, he received orders to transfer the capital to Cancabato. And this was approved in October 1734. And uh, that there was a CISO of uh, where where the capital would be si since that time. So anyway, uh, mm, uh, according to Artigas, the first uh, the first mention of Tacloban as a name was could be dated to 1813, and uh, in the wake of Yolanda, I actually uh, theorized that. Uh, Mm, the name Tacloban was associated with uh, another uh, cataclysm like Yura Yolanda. Uh, like th there must have been, uh, there must have been uh, mm, a, a disaster of same magnitude, uh, which was not mentioned in the literature, but uh, somewhere during the debate on whether the the, uh, the capital should be in Tacloban or Carigara. As, as, as late as 1817, the proponents for Carigara said, ano ban makukuha man sa Tacloban nga puros man ito mga ruba di daan mga area. So it, it suggested that there was a uh, major, uh, parang uh, Tacloban was in ruins uh, as uh, in uh, 1817. So but anyway, uh, um, uh, Monsignor uh, Gilbert and I actually uh, uh, start uh, had actually discussed this issue, and it seems it was the Augustinians who actually uh, created uh, uh, Kankabatok as uh, as a pueblo. It, uh, Kankabatok was a, was a rather uh, a rebellious part of Tacloban, and uh, because uh, they failed, actually they, they were. The Augustinians were trying to uh, introduce the Santo Nino, but until they were able to uh, 
to uh, establish kan kabatok, they could not introduce the Santo Nino uh, worship and image uh, in in Leyte and even in in, in summer. So anyway, uh, by 1787, the August Augustinians are already building Tacloban, uh, Kankabatok as the capital. In by, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, by 1824, uh, Pedro Antonio again uh, argued that the uh, capital should be brought to Carigara. And then by 1827, another governor, Don Ciferino Hernandez, uh, said, thought that it should be in Tacloban and this was actually uh, made made into realization. So by 26 February 1813, Tacloban had become the capital of uh, Leyte. But it took many years actually, at, at least uh, more than 40 years of CISO between Carigara and Tacloban as capital of Leyte. That's, that's up for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Borinaga. Indeed, that's a very interesting history of, of as you called it, seesaw or, or oscillation between Caregara and Tacloban. Very valuable information in po pointing out uh, the specific years. Um, now let's uh, have uh, Monsignor Urbina, who, if I remember from reading one of his articles, emphasized how uh, the establishment of Tacloban and the devotion to, to the Santo Nino are very much entangled. You, perhaps you can uh, expound on this and uh, of course the conversation uh, a while ago. Yeah, uh, uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Dr. Ross for that insightful uh, talk. No? Uh, first of all, I would like to, well, this is probably one of the sources would, of, the, of the transfer probably would just, would, would be the topography of Carigara, if we need a port, for example, where, where larger ships can 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 uh, oh, well can be can uh, can be can stay, no, probably Tacloban would have been a better place, no. And anyway, I don't know. I would like to ask, what would have been the? I'm I'm not sure, no. What would have been the condition of Carigara and the early? 19th century, considering the fact that originally Carigara was inland, no, diba? Inland and Carigara compared to Tacloban then, no? So, siguro, uh, it would be easier, no, for example, for large ships, especially the uh, 19th century with the so called industrialization already, no, coming in. So, there was need for larger ships. Now, Carigara at that time, at the beginning of the 9th century, would have been uh, inland, more inland. No, I am not sure. No, I'm just ask, ask. I would like to ask. And a good condition Carigara then at the beginning, no, I mean, because uh, it was more inland. Probably the one of the reasons that would have been one of the reasons why they had to look for a place that would be near nearer the sea, and that's why the choice of Kankabato. No, and uh, secondly. Uh, I would I would surmise that in fact Tacloban would be nearer Samar, you know, and considering the fact that uh, actually it was Basai and and Palo, no, well South Samar and is the eastern seaboard of Leyte and the South Samar is just uh, one ethnic stack. No? The, the, in fact there was even that I mean, the Paris piece of Basai was the same time the Paris piece of Palo, so. This is uh, this is a so the the near the proximity of Tacloban to Basai and to Palo. I think that that contributed to the to the choice of Tacloban in relation to the uh, how do you call this the the missionary no? assigned there. So it would have been easier for him no to be to 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 minister both to Palo or come to Palo and to uh, Basai. So. And, and this is uh, one of the reasons probably why uh, could have been one of the reasons why uh, Tacloban at the, at the beginning really gained importance. And thirdly, uh, at the time, at the, er, at the end of the, of the 19th century, the beginning of the 19th century, the, the, the Moros, you know, or which were 
a constant menace to the local population were already in check. No, during that time there were no major motor raids in this region anymore. Probably if there were, they were just simply bandits, no, local bandits even. No, but major raids uh, didn't happen anymore. So it was more convenient for the people to come out. No, like for example, this this a place that would have been uh, more well, like you said, like Dr. Ross said about Akloban, has all the access from east to west, no? So, so for, for larger ships. And uh, that's all for the moment. Thank you. Damang salamat, Monsignor Urbina. Indeed, that's also a very interesting uh, surmisal of, of how Karigara as a place has transformed. It, that it has probably not always been coastal from the very beginning. Uh, and then the factors you talked about in, in terms of the transfer from Karigara to Tacloban are also explored in, in the pre-recorded conversation. So um, we'll give the interlocutors in the pre-recorded conversation time to respond to your thoughts and perspectives later during the forum. But for now, let's continue with the second part where they explore the factors of the transfer of, of the center of Leyte. Anyway, so in my article, I, I cited several factors kay ano nga nabalhin and and uh, center from from Karigara to Tacloban, um, citing of course the official sources naging gamit han mga um, mga colonial officials, no? Kasi kay, syempre, in the 19th century han ginpopush ni ra nga uh, Tacloban an maging uh, new political and military center. Kailangan nilang i-justify, no? What were the reasons? So ano yung mga reasons na makiki, uh, binanggit, no? Nung um, colonial officials at that time, well, number one, yung strategic location ng Tacloban, no? It, it was very strategic. Um, of course, madali, no? Madali yung pag- um, uh, yung control, pag-manage, no? uh, pag-supervise, pag not only uh, sa Leyte per se, but also yung karatig probinsya, yung karatig isla ng Samar. No? As I've mentioned, talagang fluid. No? Yung strategic location na ito, may kinalaman din sa mga Moro raids no? uh, because they found that the Bay of Tacloban provided safe harbor, no? mas safe siya from the moral raids that were rampant in the 17th, 18th centuries. And unfortunately, and Karigara, for the longest time no, in the 17th and 18th centuries, rep, no, paulit-ulit, very frequent nga na dadaanan hiya, han mga moral raids, o yung mga tinatawag natin na mga pangangayaw, no, from the south, and strategy man itong mga moral raids, gin bubung tubung to nira, no, from, uh, from the southern part of Leyte, mag bubung tubung to, so ang damo talaga nga mga moral raids. Kay, at that time, of course, kung ikaw, part ka itong mga moral raids, iisipin mo which part of the island and pinakadamo ang mga an, in, inhabitants. Kaya ang, ang kinahanglan mo for the more raids, tawo. Iba man, raid kahin tawo para maging um, magamit mo dun sa slave raiding na tinatawag, di ba? So, kung mapapansin niyo, puniyo, yan na, tikang hadto pa, hadto pa, damo ang mga bungto, didiham, han, um, side hin karigara, and damo ang mga inhabitants, di ba? Adaan Karigara, adaan Barugo, tapos Makadikati pa ubos, adaan Palumpon, adaan Baybay, ada, di ba? Ito mga settlements facing facing uh, Camotes Islands and, and Cebu. Kung ikukumpara mo didi ha other side and facing Pacific, although aadaan, aadaan uh, Tanawan, aadaan Dagami, no? Nga, ginaabot gihapon han mga moral rates, mas damo nga di other side. So, ang tendency ang mga moral raids, nga di talaga. So, ang karigara, talagang pirmi, pirmi ito ma, maapektuhan han, han mga moral raids. So, ang takloban, kaya ito man hiya, bagahiyan, di ba, bagan tago hiya. So, nakita nga strategic nga location nga diri hiya, diri hiya very um, vulnerable, no, from, from these moral raids. And of course, yung ports, no, in the 19th century, late 18th century to the 19th century, nag-iiba na ang an character han Pilipinas, uh, nag-iiba na rin ang Spanish um, colonial administration no, in the Philippines. This was the time, ang tawag natin dito in, actually, 
mag apply ito sa halos kabuuan ng Pilipinas. In the late 18th century to the 19th century, this was the period of, you know, great um, social economic transformations in the Philippines. Ito yung time na um, medyo napapacify na yung mga moral raids, kaya nagbutang hindi mga mga baluarte, hindi mga damo nga mga uh, defense structures. Uh, humina na rin gihapon ang Sultanate ha, ha southern parts of the Philippines, napalakas ang an, an naval uh, naval force, han mga Espanyol. So medyo humina talaga ang mga moral raids. So Pagdating in 18th to 19th century, nagbago, na nagkaroon na ng time and opportunity ang maraming mga provinces in the Philippines no, to focus on the uh, social and economic transformations and uh, development. So ito yung mga time na nagkaroon na ng, um, nag, nag, nakapag, nagsisimula na magtanim, no? mga agricultural cash, mga exports, no? nagtatanim na ang mga tao, nag, um, may din na international trade. So ang Tacloban was one of the first local ports no? na naabrihan at talagang na actively engaged in uh, local uh, domestic uh, maritime commerce. No? So yan yung isa sa mga dahilan dahil sa lumalakas yung kanyang role no as a port city tapos yung strategic location niya in terms of defense yung lumalaking inhabitants niya no uh, lumalaking inhabitants nagkakaroon ng nagkaroon ng mas maraming structures sa sa Tacloban whereas uh, Hakarigara and maybe this can be uh, you know something na pwedeng i-reflect ng mga taga Karigaran on no and or somebody who will do local history and an Karigara as a center parang ang kwento niya sugadhiya ba tas nagsugadhiya you know diri wala niya na reach and you know and linear development of a town and the center no it has a very rich cultural history rich uh, tradition no ada ada and tradition in Karigara pero in terms of yung political and economic um na pagiging center what diri niya na reach diri niya na reach ito nga ito nga story may limitations also there were also a lot of reports about the limitations of Karigara port kay diri diri nakaka diri nakakapasok ang mga malalaki nga mga barko kay bisan an late 19th century and early 20th century damo ang mga abaca plantations near supposedly hakarigara dapat from karigara saka i i ita transport to manila pero diri kaya makapagdaong han mga dako nga mga barko whereas in tacloban kaya so yun yung tapos on the on this side of of Leyte ang mga tawo ang mga komersyante maka dinalihara Cebu imbes na maka diha karigara adi na laha Cebu so, so so this side of Leyte and Tacloban and Samar amo ito ang mas nag progress so it was a mix of economic, social, um, military, religious as well, kay Haranya Palo. So factors. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think I think that's something na uh, even the mga taga Karigara are aware of that uh anera limitation anera <laughs> anera port. Uh as say even if we, if if you go there um right now or in the past few years di ba bagan ang makikita din talaga na kuan may dasugod dito nga de, de rin nagod sugod na damo na daong nga uh, big big ships o siguro da coastal fishing vessels mga ganun but Amo. yeah that that's the strategic advantage of of Tacloban may nainumduman la ko nga isa nga o sa nga account it was this was in the late 19th century talking about the limitations of the Karigara port na yun nga um Kasi kailangan mo nung mas malalaking ano, no, ship, especially kung mag-engage ka sa commerce. At diri talaga kaya. Diri kaya makasakob ha, ha karigara. So yan yung isa sa mga talagang um, uh, reasons. Kaya ang mga komersyante ko, no, maderecho na Hatakloban. And then from Tacloban, ang mga other komersyantes from Katbalogan, iguubos ni Hatakloban. Then from Tacloban, maderecho na ha Manila. Diri na, yeah, ha, yeah. Diri na ha karigara. Yeah. Kaya it seems counterintuitive that tap uh, karigara will not grow kay kung we're just going to look at it nga uh, spatial location niya it's near biliran supposed to be near cebu and near samar pero yeah me, the, that is really you know, the, the unfortunate uh, geographical 
uh, karakteristik nga bisan sentrohiya makita kita mapa nga sentrohiya uh, the, the 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 physical features cannot support the demands of of development and port talaga no yeah. and mm-hmm. yeah I think for talaga since then until now very yeah, yeah until now um siguro ano um uh, Dr. Costello uh, maybe you can uh, share sh- uh, um just a short um discussion why 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 was there um an an explosion of not necessarily explosion but an increase in uh, uh the development and mga bungto no I, I think even uh the the listeners here who can go to this town some of the towns in Leyte founding date nera would be already be in the 19th century and like say for example some of the really old towns like Dulag Tanawan Palo Karigara which can claim uh, 1500s founded Ulta. sila yeah uh, Adana. but the Adana Hera, no? Burawin, Dagami, Adana Hera, Nuna pa. But some of the towns, no, if you if you go go to their places, no, and look at their establishment dates, um, 1800s, and uh, yeah, you you talked about that in your article. But why why 1800 uh, 1800s yung um de- development of these new bongos? Mm-mm. Okay, actually, Professor Yi, ano hiya bagan? Pwede natin hiya signon na ano ni uh, trend in hiya uh, mga damo ng mga provinces in the Philippines, no? A 19th century talaga was a period of you know establishment of so many towns in the Philippines. Proof, of course, proof ito han sinisaring ko kanina nga social economic transformations, of course. Dahil sa socio-economic development in the late 18th and 19th century, it led to, you know, the um, uh, to, it led to an increase, no? Of course, sa mga inhabitants ng mga maraming towns, tapos itong mga towns na ito, masyadong mga malalaki na, yung mga visita, or yung mga maliliit na mga barrio, eventually they would, you know, um, uh, seek, no? For, you know, a separate uh, entity, political entity. At first, ano anay, uh, re, um, uh, what do you call that? parokya ane ang gusto nira kahit human magiging magiging kuan nahera magiging uh, separate bungto or magiging separate pueblo nahera so ano siya trend yan kung baga ni- 19th century thing yan in the in the Philippines so um, in in late katulad han iba pa nga mga provinces in the Philippines amo gihapon an experience and late and you know isa ito kumbaga kung may daman usa na theme na gusto ko i-highlight ha ako naging research um talaga 19th century ito yung period na dadamo hinduro nga mga towns in late map ma mabubuo hira map found hira in in the 19th century specifically second half of the 19th century kasi nga tulad ng binanggit ko na kanina uh, late 18th and 19th century dahil mahihina na ang mga moral raids, uh, magkakamayada na stability ang mga mara- damo nga mga towns, uh, ma- mahataas and magkakamayada increase no, in population, um, magkakamayada economic development, socio-economic development. Um, yan yung mga pangunahing reasons. These are the you know uh, principal reasons why um, most or many of the towns in Leyte uh, were, you know, um, uh, were um, founded in the second half of the 19th century. So, yan yung, yan yung reasons, no, ng, ng um, and the, uh, sa mga names pa lang, you know, uh, names pa lang ng mga towns, makikita mo na kung ano-an mga 19th century uh, towns, no, kaya nira mga ngaran, no, like halimbawa, um, Pastrana, no Pastrana. So ang Pastrana ay usang uh, um, usang town di Spain. Uh, most most of the time, ginangaran an an a new name han town din kukuha hiya from the um, pueblo kundiin tikang and parish priest. Yeah. So halimbawa an Pastrana, um dito han article ko gin mention ko na he father Eusebio Ibanez. 
kiyaan parish priest during that time na you know may uh, requests no and natives and mga principales kada karamihan mga principales ito mga nagre-request no na mag-separate hira or mag-form hira ng bago nga mga pueblo or mga punto so and parish priest at that time he father Eusebio Ibanez taga Pastrana hiya no it's a it's a town in the province of Guadalajara So here in Spain. So amo ito katulad din ng Merida, ng uh, Tolosa. Ano pa ba? Um yan. Yan, yun yung mga examples yeah. na pwedeng ibigay. Yeah, parang uh, I think you also mentioned uh, Albuera, no? <laughs> in uh, oh, some former visit of Ormoc. <laughs> yes, and Albuera naman, it here it's um It's a municipality in uh, the uh, area of Extremadura. So, yan. So, makikita mo hanggang mga ngaran palahan mga towns. Kung ano-an, kung medyo toponym, medyo very local and yang ngaran, like Carigara or Kangara, no, or Palo, or Tanawan, no. Uh, kita mo nga mga kwan ini, mga, mga, maihan na ini. Old towns. <laughs> maihan na. Towns. Yeah. Oh, no, um, now, now that you you mentioned it, um, all good man. No, there, there are two um, kumbaga linguistic ano characteristics yung mga towns in in later. No, I think I guess also in some are na bagan may the Spanishized or yeah, really um, the the Spanish names and then uh, some that uh, really uh, would really point to a local language. No, okay? there there would be no equivalent in. <laughs> In, in in Spanish. Oo, so tinitingnan ko nga yan, nga niya na mga mga ku ano, mga local names like Dulag, Dagami, ni ba? Tanawan, sa so, mga sugad so, these names Abuyog, no? Yeah. Yeah, mga mga sugad so, ini nga mga names, Baybay, Ormoc, yeah. Oogmoc, Ogmoc, Palumpon, yeah. Palumpong. So these these names. And, ah, and the names Some of the names really go back, no? Uh, way, way back. I, in the colonial encounter, they were already referring to Humonhon as Humonhon. Oh, yes. <laughs> and Suluan as Suluan. Oh, yes. Ang gin, ang gin, ang gin gami, ang akong ginhi mo, Professor Yi, para makita ko, kasi syempre, minsan, ha, mga archival documents, di rin mo ma-establish ano na ba ang mga settlements nga ada na before like 16th century or 17th century or 18th century so ako ang ginhimo gimbal gimbal bumalik ako ning kita ko ang iba't ibang nga mga um, available maps in different through time so 16th century 17th century 18th century that's ito nga mga maps ning kita ko ano na ang mga na-identify nga mga communities kasi that pag of course kuna mapa na ito no ibig sabihin when it is already mapped it is already identified no aada na ang mga you know yung mga initial um, steps no na hitun kumbaga you know uh, really getting to know that space so amo ton ako yeah. usang gin strategy nga gin himo para ma-identify what were the old uh, settlements in in Leyte ah uh, yeah uh, thank you uh, Dr. Costello Sig- siguro i have uh, one last question and tangentially related um, to archival research pero you know One, one of the objectives of this uh, conversation is to really to drum up uh, interest in uh, local histories. And uh, I guess one of the ways that you can really drum up the interest is yung visualization. No? Na makikita natin na may history. No? And uh, my question was re- uh, to you was um, what, what will be... Uh, And since you are you you are an expert in 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 the long uh, Spanish colonial history, no. Um, what what would be the prospects, for example, if someone would be interested in archaeological digs of the colonial uh, past? Okay, when you mentioned about the Dewu studies, no, the 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 archaeological studies in the late summer studies, no. Um, if I remember correctly, many of these uh, research were about yung mga pre-colonial. And really, matagal na na pre-colonial findings sa uh, Sohoton Cave, and then uh, in the caves of South Southeastern and Southwestern Samar, no? And and yeah, that it, intuitive siya, no? Because, sure, caves are uh, habit uh, habitats of, of early early human set uh, humans, no? So I was wondering, um, siguro uh, like uh, ano yung prospects that um, 
uh, there, there would be still be fruitful archaeological finds from uh, colonial colonial past, like chances that you find an old fort or an old mission, uh, old religious mission in 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 Leyte. Uh, kasi uh, you know, kung makikita siya ng mga tao, then parang oy yeah, parang rather sometimes the text is ano no kay Dere man doon nakikita yung text, but when you see an old fort, parang, oh, okay, parang, that's history. So, um, maybe uh, your insight on on this uh, um, on, on this uh, question as uh, probably a, a conclusion as well. Mm, siguro, well, one, pwede, well, number one, an institution nga pwede talaga, or two institutions na naisip ko right now na, you know, pwedeng pwede talaga natin i-consult would be, of course, the National Museum of the Philippines. Kay all excavations should be under them. I mean, kailangan may permit nila. And also, yung Archaeological Studies Program of the of the University of the Philippines na nasa Diliman. So at least, ito yung two institutions sa may ma-identify na tayo. So, like, kung ang very kung interested ang ating mga local governments yung mga LGUs natin no to you know initiate some diggings or kahit initial studies lang ako before talaga ang archaeological excavation per se very important yung archival research muna you know ano muna tignan muna ano yung ano yung nakasulat sa dokumento muna nasaan halimbawa first would be to identify kung ang gusto natin ay pre-colonial past no kung pre-colonial pwede rin kasi Spanish period na sinabi mo nga mga forts kasi pre-colonial i don't think na may makikita tayo ng mga um, fortifications no kasi may kung may fortifications man at that time from the sources that we have alam natin na these were you know materials from you know bamboo wood no um shells maybe so uh, these materials ay hindi masyado nating kakampihan in terms of you know uh, yung um, that will you know di na maram kita nga most probably it hindi hirira nag withstand no sa time and with all the um catastrophes na nag hit sa late sa summer area so makuri no so kung malamang kung pre-colonial past pwede siguro mga maybe to establish yung mga connections yung mga um, maybe economic uh, yung bawa ano yung mga pottery maybe kung may pottery maybe kung um, uh, or whatever it is na material culture na pwedeng ma makuha no from the diggings so kung yun ang interest natin pues ang pinaka madali natin nga pwede mahimo identify natin ano yung mga old settlements so amaram na kita anong mga old settlements karigara dagami dulag um area of Ogmok or Mok, Kangkabato, Kamay Tacloban, or area Hinmaasin, mga suga dito nga mga areas, no? Hinunangan, Hinundayan, ito, Hinunangan, Hinundayan, mga kwan nito di hapon, mga old settlements, no? So that area. So from there, pwede siguro magkita on, pwede na mag, mag-try ko ng mga uh, excavations pag pre-colonial. Kung Spanish period naman, Correct me if I'm wrong, Professor. You kung sino man makaka 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 bati hininga aton pag-restorya. Mara mako kung had either had agami or had dulag. May ada isang nga area nga bagan supposedly excavation hia nga supposedly amu hia and site han first nga mga seminario han mga Jesuits nga gin 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 create gin found nira ha area hin dagami or dulag dire la ko masyado nga sure kon dagami or dulag pero may ada sugad hini nga mga efforts or initiatives so bangin pwede ba ba may mga structures nga una nga na nga na nga na, nga na create an an usa ko lang nga an usa ko lang nga caveat kumbaga professor yi Kay usually, ang mga ha, Spanish sources, maaram kita kung may ada mga big structures na gin, gin erect or gin construct ang mga Spanyol in say 17th century, 18th century, 19th century. Kasi usually may plano ito. Kung may plano or gin may mention nila ha, mga documents. Unfortunately, never pa ako nakakita hin grand plan, no? hin hin any structure in 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 late, even a fort nga 
grand talaga nga, you know. So, amoy ito na akong caveat, kumbaga, kung mamimiling kitahin mga, you know, forts, like yung mga big structures na would really, you know, reconstruct our colonial past, amoy ito na akong diri ma-assure. And may ada, textual. So, So archaeology um, kailangan hin very extensive ana yung archival research san o kita magtikang mag magdig no mag maghukay feeling ko that's, that is from my um, op- that is my opinion so siguro iba an opinion ng atin talaga mga trained archaeologists all right uh, yes uh, thank you dr costello you know um yeah when you mentioned about the lgs parang nag ano ako Nagtando talaga kay, di ba? Sometimes it's really an LGU initiative uh, for these efforts. And of course, what you mentioned about archivals, tama naman yun. Kasi the way the dig will be a waste if wala, <laughs> walang solid. Kunwari kita basic. Kunwari kita basic. Siguro kuharan ko ini nga time. Kung may edad na mamati, no, nga, um, siguro kung may ang mga LGs, LGUs interesado hira, you know, we can start with our local histories, no? Balik kita ha, Even yung basic and aton mga and foundation story naton, you know how our pueblos, our bungtos were were erected, were founded. Hino and aton mga first in the founders of our pueblos, din kita tikang mga sukad hito. Yeah, um, well, that's very interesting, ano, uh, Doctor Costello. So um, I would just like to recap, no, some of the points that um, were raised and. Uh, for our listeners, uh, Dr. Costello uh, raised the importance no, of, of archival research in understanding the local histories. And uh, for our listeners, especially students, no, that it would be very, very great for 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 us, for you to, um, yeah, be able to 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 appreciate no this uh, archival uh, archival research. And uh, yung article niya no about uh. Um, the, 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 the article latest sa Danta on 19, pagtukoy ng kabisera at pagbuo ng mga bagong bungto, I think uh, really for me, uh, should be uh, a required reading in <laughs> local history classes in the sense that we don't have, ano, no? we don't have uh, much uh, information uh, um, in, uh, in, in the um, uh, about, about this uh, topic. And unfortunately, no, grow, growing up, we read about the national history but um in the local history and i think this is really a very good uh a path breaking uh, article and of course um the, there are articles of, of dr roli uh, rolando borinaga no um kumbaga, there, there is already you uh, know uh, uh, um uh my 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 well now of these sources and um a lot of people can build up on this um of course uh, and uh appreciating the technique that was uh, shared to us so dr costello um do you have any you know, any um uh closing remarks for 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 the audience um i think an usaha an usa nga parang uh, goals no han ini nga program and body um para talaga ma revisit naton and aton history no interestingly um nabanggit niyo kanina ang term nga kaagi no my my dissertation my master's thesis was actually ang title niya kaagi han late no um i think pwede kita um pumalik kito nga term no kaagi no anon aton gin agian ano an aton gin um anon aton past no as a people no when i was doing my research on the local history of Leyte, it was also my conscious effort ta akon nga i retain and mga local concepts local terms like halimbawa and bungto no um uh, so that also may ipakilala an aton uh, sarili nga concept no uh, kay and mga ilokano may dahira ili no uh, may da banwa ay ili ba tama ba ili no may banwa no so ang mga um, from the uh, western side of visayas no so at least kita may dakita bungto no or mga tagalog bayan may dakita our own concept in bungto may dakit may dakit kita sarili nga concept in history and aton concept of kaagi no so um, as much as we uh, we use um, 
archival documents no uh, documents that were uh, formed no during the colonial period diri gihapon natin gin kakalimtan no an paggamit han aton mga local uh, and uh, sarili nga mga concepts and aton and aton talaga concepts and aton terms and the way we we see the way we um the way we see our, um our history no the way we we try to explain no an aton ginagian no so siguro amo ton akon um siguro humble contribution ha han uh, enriching uh, um discourse no on the history of local history of uh, Leyte Actually, hindi lang late, kung hindi siguro mas yung late summer, the late summer region, no? So, or the late summer uh, area, no? So, yun. That was the second half of the pre-recorded conversation between Dr. Costello and Professor Yi. Uh, indeed, very interesting um, information and ideas about this part of our local history and very interesting meditation on the language by which we express it. Um, at this point, let's call back our reactors, uh, Dr. Barinaga. Uh, uh, during, uh, during much of the Spanish colonial years, the requirements for the um, creation of a Pueblo essentially apat. You know? The first is uh, there should be uh, Pueblo should have 500 tributes. So, tri five hundred tributes. So, uh, so in in a uh, in a village, the uh, tributaries uh, and uh, the the estimated population would be about two thousand or two thousand five hundred because there there was an equivalent of uh, one tribute and uh, four or five uh, dependents per tribute. The second requirement was uh, the, the pueblo must have a casa real, tribunal, municipio, municipal building. The third is it must have its own church. And then the fourth is actually watchtower, which is basically uh, uh, parang, uh, because by the, the Moro raids uh, virtually stopped around the 1840s. By 1950s, wala na Moro raids. But it was still used as uh, as justification. Uh, kailangan kayo may watchtower. Bisan wari na moro raids. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, Leyte had, uh, by 1840s, Leyte had uh, 33 pueblos. But uh, towards the end of 1840s, the Diocese of Cebu, after uh, the towns or uh, after the uh, Augustinians abandoned, the, turned over the the province to to the to the diocese, dissolved the dissolved most pueblos in Leyte. They dissolved uh, those that did not have five hundred uh, pueblos and reduced the number of pueblos to fourteen. So by 18, 18, uh, 1850, there were only. 14 pueblos recognized by the Diocese of Cebu in, uh, in Leyte. So parang ganon. Uh, you can only uh, mm, uh, have an, uh, be recognized again as a pueblo if you uh, get another 500 uh, 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 tributes. But anyway, uh, after that... Uh, there was there was there was a lot of activities among uh, settlements to actually uh, mm, create new pueblos. The trigger factor here is the abaca, mm, abaca trade, you know? and so that was uh, why many people wanted to have their own pueblos because they had they would like to have uh, their own control also of the abaca trade. So, but anyway, by eighteen ninety, there were all already about uh, 40 pueblos again in Leyte. So but then most of this uh, most of these pueblos uh, uh, came up between 1860 and 18, 1890 from 14 to from 14 to 40. So 
there were there were no moral rage, but still they had uh, to uh, to create their own uh, their own watchtower. In in some towns, uh, uh, the watchtowers that they use are basically very rudimentary, parang pang requirement lang. Uh, uh, Monsignor Urbina mentioned early on uh, about uh, the location of the Carigara, uh, original Pueblo of Carigara. Uh, it seems the original Carigara was like uh, the Palo now, just at least one kilometer up, up river. And uh, it seems through, through, through the Jesuit years, the Carigara was in Sugod. Uh, Barangay Sugod uh, uh, upstream, about uh, up river, about uh, one uh, one kilometer from the shore. It's now called Barangay Canal. There, there, there is still the. the I I uh, read and heard somewhere that there are still ruins of the Jesuit church there. Pero uh, almost almost uh, parang uh, konti na lang ang traces. The the big uh, big church. In now the population of Carigara was basically uh, an Augustinian creation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Borinaga. Um, Monsignor Urbina, please share your thoughts. Okay. Uh, the, usually in the, the creation of towns, no pueblos in the 19th century, uh, started with, uh, with the, they recognized visitas, no? So that's the case, for example, with Tacloban. Tacloban is a visita. No? That's why that means that there was already a, a church there uh, visited uh, periodically by the priest. And probably that has been also the, the, the pattern in the evangelization of the pueblos here. No? There was a first a visita, and then later on, uh, some structures will be, will be, well, first of all, there will be a chapel there or a church and other structures will then just be added later. Now regarding this, and, and it was actually mostly in the creation of the towns, it was the people who would put the petition, the priests, no? Especially if they do, and they, were, they would ask for a priest to be there, no? And that's the case probably with, also with Ormok, di ba Ormok? Uh, they were under Palompon, and they had to petition, no? The people of Ormok had to petition, nga, butangan ni Magin parokya balik keren kapalok parokya no in the 1800s and in the in this the early 20th century there was a letter I read it before but uh, that that the people of, of well talk, talking about this visit the people of uh, um, Maslog Santa Fe now were asking the priest of Palo to establish a, ch a church a permanent to assign a permanent priest there. But the Paris, the Paris came much later. Although there were some, uh, well, Santa Fe and Palo was, was uh, well, the distance, uh, Arayo and Distancia. So, Amad to nga, in Santa Fe, in Nakinang Latin Padding, Maokuito. And considering this, Amuito Adangarason, my dad one property han Han Santa Fe until now, no? It's a big property for the church area. And probably that was their, their preparation. The people had to, to prepare that property you know, for the eventual church, a bigger church no? than, uh, than, than they used to. Now, regarding the second point, at moral rates, you know, it in hand is and moral rates actually go to talk. And it on moral rates had to, and mga is convenient, convenient excuse there, and ang nasa ito rin mga moros, actually, nagad mga moros. Pero anyway, ito na ako na ito kay, and the moros actually, the moral rates so had an had, had, had impact, cultural impact on the people, ano. In fact, I remember, hanggang kutay pa ako, awaragan nasa rin ito ng mga kalagasan, katurog ko na ka mga ugto, kay bubugo, Darak bong kamun mga muros, pupugot niyo ulo, ano yung duguhi mo na kwarta. You see, uh, the moros ended almost 200 years. Uh, na, human na. And then the, the cultural, si Utala, and cultural in, in trauma and mga tao nakadapa, no? In the stories. I don't know now if the, the older folks still use that, no? As a uh, panhadlok pan, 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 ba? 
itong kabataan. So that's why people were people were used to well to use this this moral rage as convenient excuse no to to really force the people to do something no about that. So I'm going to akon kan akon baga sharing ayo. Thank you, thank, thank you, Monsignor uh, Urbina. Now uh, we have come to the part of, of the afternoon where you, our attendees. Uh, have the opportunity to ask our interlocutors your questions or maybe even just share your thoughts uh, with them uh, about the series of conversations. Uh, may we request uh, Dr. Costello and Professor Yi, and of course Dr. Borinaga and Monsignor Urbina whose videos are open now. Dr. Costello and Dr. Yi, uh, please join us back by turning on your video if you're able to. All right. Um, now to our attendees, to help us easily monitor your questions, uh, please ask your questions through the Q&A Q &A box. Um, at, at the center of the lower part of, of your screen, the Q&A button is at the rightmost side. So please click on it. Uh, a box will appear where you can then encode your question. Actually, we already have one question here from uh, Assistant Professor Ruchi Mark Pototadon from UP Visayas. Uh, may I read his um, uh, question? Addressed to Dr. Costello. Hello, Dr. Costello. Uh, thank you for your talk. I have also been doing research on 19th century copies. I can't help but make comparisons with your data. I have two questions. One, uh, you mentioned that visitas have to be a parochia first before becoming a pueblo. This seems to be the reverse for capis, as it was easier for the principales to organize themselves and set up a civil government, but it will take them more time to set up a parish or parochia with a resident priest. Um, I'll just ask the other question uh, after you address this first one. Dr. Costello. Hello, hello, uh, Sir uh, Um Actually, the general trend um, would be um yung formation muna ng um ng parokya sa kasya magiging pueblo yan yung uh, general trend i mean if we go back to the sources to the archival sources ganyan ganyan yung usual na trend in fact i if i remember it um right there was one conference and uh there was a group of um historians karamihan dito ay mga histor um historians from the University, University of Asia and the Pacific, they had this research group composed of professors Yvette Camacho, um, uh, Grace Concepcion, and yung research interest na la talaga was paano ba talaga yung usual formation ng mga towns. So yung nakita doon was, yun nga, yun yung general trend. Maghahanap muna ng uh, ang term na lagi nilang ginagamit, matriz, matriz de parokya. No? Maghahanap sila ng matriz or um, parang mother, mother church. No? Kailangan yung bisita maging parokya muna sa kasila magiging yung pueblo. But if, it's that, if, it's, if that's the case naman in Capiz, nakaiba, so maybe iba yung naging, iba yung naging experience no? sa Capiz. Kaya yun yung beauty no ng paggawa ng local histories kasi nakikita natin yung uh, general trends yung unique stories yung continuities and discontinuities ng ng mga kwento no babalikan ko yung uh, parang uh, yung kinikwento dito ng ano uh, tungkol sa formation ng towns you know one of the exciting experiences na talagang na na, na naalala ko when i was doing this research i i um I came, I know, uh, I did, well, hindi talaga discovered, no? but I saw uh, several documents in the National Archives of the Philippines written in the local languages when they were petitioning for the creation of their pueblos or uh, when they want, um, noong nagpipetition sila ng paghiwalay sa kanilang mga uh, paro, uh, pueblos o parokyas. And yun yung beauty, no? Then, kasi bihirang bihira tayo makakita ng mga ganitong klase ng documents. Kaya, Sana kung um, ngayong ginagawa mo yung copies uh, local history, I am just curious, meron ka bang mga nakita ng mga sources that were also written in the, in the local languages? Kasi ang ganda kasi yung uh, dominant historiography natin o local histories, parang laging ang, ang appreciation ay top to bottom. no That these pueblos or these parishes were envisioned from the top. 
but we see in these documents that you know natives uh, the locals they played an active role no in the formation of their histories at sila mismo yung nag nagpetition using their own language so makikita natin yung integration no yung slowly yung integration of the natives in the political um, colonial bureaucracy yun uh, thank you very much dr costello uh Professor Pototanon's other question is, aside from the peace and prosperity of the 19th century, what are other factors that can be seen in the documents for town foundations? In the case of Capiz, many of the principales would cite the difficulties during tiempos del lluvias, or time of rains, literally, uh, in, in getting the sacraments. Do natural hazards also appear to be relevant in the case of Bongtos in Leyte? Definitely, definitely. Um, uh, if you can just, di ko alam kung may copy ka ng article, uh, sir. Um, I cited several examples um, in my article. And then, dalawa, I think, dun sa mga examples, locals um, writing in the native language, native language, kunikwento nila how difficult it was for them to cross rivers. Uh, kasi doon pa sila uh, doon na, nabibilang yung kanilang uh, bisita or yung kanilang uh, sitio so definitely environmental fact um, and then um, cross rivers during um, during uh, inundaciones no mga floods so yun yung ano yun yung isa sa mga reasons din na binibigay nila Indeed. Um, and uh, we will also be may we have the permission Dr. Castello to share the link to your article it's available online right yeah. That's how I found it. Um, we will be sharing that in, in the chat box uh, in a while. Um, I recall uh, the idea of um, uh, the difficulty when we talk about uh, um, our parts of our history in certain periods and the difficulty to verify uh, the historicity of certain events. Um, I'm, I'm raising this because this was also pointed out by um, Monsignor Ramon Aguilos earlier in, in, in the chat box, he talked about how it is difficult to, you know, uh, verify certain uh, sources and, and therefore the historicity of, of particular uh, events. And uh, this is something you touched upon in, in the conversation as well. Um, now, uh, moving on to the, to the uh, next question, let me ask this one first in, in the chat box uh, from uh, Professor uh, Arvin de Vera, uh, he said that in the title of this forum, we are spelling the word bongto as B-O-N-G-T-O. Uh, I thought it is spelled and I am used to spelling it as B-U-N-G-T-O. May I know the reference to the word bongto? Is it Spanish? Thank you, uh, Professor de Vera, sa uh, yung question. Actually, ang um, primary basis ko dyan ay yung mga vocabularios or yung mga diksyonarios ng uh, Espanyol, Bisaya, but actually yung Bisaya ay Leyte Waray. Merong dalawang uh, diksyonaries. Um, pwede ako mag-share uh, screen siguro. Um, Go ahead, um, Sige. This one is a, a dictionary. Pwede ninyo siya ma-access. There's an very 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 nice website it's called uh, B, the, the website of the biblioteca nacional de españa na the national library of spain and then and dami nila mga digitized um, materials so punta lang kayo dun, b b n e dot e s so like for example this is an 1895 uh, dictionario so ang pueblo uh, is bongto no so that, that that's the that's the way um, the 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 word was spelled. Um, this was in in 1895, and there's also one in 19 um, 1914 by Antonio Sanchez. Also, the spelling was um, a pueblo with um, where is that? Um, con o, no, with o. This one. Bongto. I don't know if nakikita ninyo sa screen ninyo. Pero, di ba, alam, pero ano naman yan, parang, I, I think, I believe, pareho, pwede naman silang gamitin dalawa kasi, di ba, yun naman yung karakter din ng ating mga wika. Hindi naman talaga tayo sensitive dun sa strong O at dun sa soft O, no? At sa soft E tsaka soft E. Kaya nga, di ba, sabay-bayin natin pareho siya. So, para lang merong consistency at merong um, merong um, uh, what do you call that? Um, historical reference, yung paggamit ko ng O. So yun. Kaya uh, conscious yung, pag, yung choice ko na O. 
because it came from the old older dictionaries of uh, Espanol uh, Bisaya or Samar Leteño. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Costello. Um, our other interlocutors may also respond to the questions, by the way. Um, another question we have here in, in the Q&A box is, is from an anonymous attendee, is the Sab'a peatland significant in the history of the towns around it? I'm asking since restoration efforts for it may be helped with historical accounts of its significance. Um, uh, siguro I can help uh, take on the question um, yes, sir, because uh, um, Karigara um, was not is not part of the of the ecosystem, so um, it might be unfair for Dr. Costello to uh, answer it. Um, pero I think she touched uh, naman on in her article and in her explanation to uh, Professor Rucci's question the significance of environmental factors uh, in shaping uh, demands for um, creating or establishing a bongko or a separate um, political administrative jurisdiction. Um, although uh, the, the historical uh, accounts in her article uh, focused on river systems, especially since uh, river systems naman talaga, uh, yung, um, yung that constitute not determines but constitutes patterns of human settlements. So it's uh, access to trade, access to water, access to livelihoods, etc. Uh, the interests with uh, uh, the young peatland uh, that would cover what uh, Father Urbina mentioned, Kanina, uh, Santa Fe, Alang Alang, uh, San Miguel, and uh, the the mountainous areas of of Tacloban and Barayong in Palo. Um, uh, we have to be aware of uh, uh, partly with the, condi with the conditions of a peatland, diba? If it, it, in the, it's not necessarily very conducive for human habitation. It's very difficult to till. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, trying to, for example, search for uh, an artifact in these areas may be a bit difficult, no? Uh, in fact, archaeological research on peatlands in Europe will actually date back to mga findings nila for thousands of years uh, in, in times when the conditions were uh, not as the same as our conditions now. So kumbaga, what I'm trying to say is siguro if it's, if it's the historical period of Spanish period, um, then maybe trying to search for any um, cultural accounting of the peatland for trying to help in conservation efforts may be a bit difficult, no? Uh, um, considering yung uh, yung biophysical characteristic talaga ng area. Pero to to go back to the general trend of ano of, of in, in ecosystems in helping shaping um, ano uh, cultural um, significance of areas. Of course, that is very 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 valid. Uh, siguro magbabari na lang talaga siya with uh, with the temperature, humidity, kasi nakaka-affect siya dun sa materiality of the evidence. Eh. Uh, as what uh, Dr. Costello has mentioned in, in our conversation and uh, about the difficulties of, of, of uh, artifacts in, in tropical countries like the Philippines. Um, so yun, um, maybe the uh, uh, other panelists may have something to add. Um, pero yun, I... I I'll try to answer lang kay I'm also part of a project na, na nasa area so uh, maybe I know the person who asked the question. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you uh, Professor Dakila Yi. Uh, can you mention the name of the project? Uh, no no um ano kasi parang ano lang siya exploratory talk eh. so it's not, eh, parang wala namang finalized pero since you know projects people people are interconnected with each other so yeah. uh, maybe um, kaya pa may familiarity lang ako sa sa area pero yun um pero kung uh, like the actual area in itself the actual pitland in itself it may be difficult to ascertain <laughs> siguro the entire locality of Santa Fe Alang Alang and the farmlands that emerged out of it no pero the pitland itself baka mahirap na yun but um yun thank you yeah, salamat sir 
um, our other panelists, uh, Dr. Borinaga, Monsignor Urbina, or Dr. Costello, anything to add uh, to this discussion? Um, in that case, uh, may I uh, read a question from the um, uh, comment section on Facebook? Uh, I guess this is more related to the earlier questions. From Sean Francis Balais, he is asking, was Ormoc ever considered as a potential capital for Leyte rather than Tacloban or Carigara? I haven't found any document um, na it was uh, considered as a as a political center. So maybe yun yung limitation natin, yun yung sources lang na meron tayo. So Yes, indeed, it depends on what else we can find, right, in, in the archives. Uh, but for sure, Ormoc is one of the oldest settlements previously named yes, definitely. Ogumok. Yeah. Ogumok, yeah. Also I surmise it was the development, the, the economic development was more uh, was more in the 20, uh, 20th century, late 19th to early 20th century with the... Um, um, with, uh, um, uh, um, improvements no boost boom ng um domestic uh, trade no Dom domestic maritime trade so because that became the gateway ng mga um vessels sea vessels uh, papunta naman ng Cebu on the other side of uh, the Camote Sea so yan yung magiging yan yung magiging direction right um thank you Dr. Costello uh our our next question is uh, from anonymous from an anonymous attendee. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Costello, and of course, our other panelists. Um, he or she is just curious. In your readings, uh, did you come across any mention of early forms of healthcare? Very timely um, question. Uh, early forms of healthcare or any health system or health in general as a factor or significant issue in the development of pueblos or in the transfer of the center? Um, I think Professor Barina, Dr. Borinaga has done so many um, researches about this. I think si Professor Borinaga. Pero sir, ang naisip ko lang ngayon, is, of course, yung works ni um, uh, Father Francisco Ignacio Alsina, no? the history of the Visayan peoples. He had so many chapters on uh, local indigenous knowledge pagdating sa medicine, health, etc. So, um, yun yung naisip ko. But, uh, yung direct citation na ang nakikita nila ay um, well not specifically health in general but maybe safety and yung potential to illnesses no ng, ng mga ng mga sites maybe i can show this syempre i-infer na lang natin it's not explicitly stated but we can infer from this um, from this um, account halimbawa um, I shared this in in, in my uh, article. This is a petition ng mga locals, no? When they were uh, parang tinat gusto nilang gusto silang i-transfer sa isang different uh, lo location, no? Ng kanilang uh, pueblo. This is what this is in Kaibiran. And then they said, "Nagpahayag kami og namulong nga tungod sinin amon bungto nga gibabalhin ngadto sa dtong lugar nga gingangaran tinago. Ginuhuna-huna namon an amon bungto gawas na sa maabot nga mga peligro tungod kay matadong nakahintangan san salug og labot paliwat madugangan sin kahilaron man sin kahiluag." Siguro ay dito ka dito na lang. Um, um, di modo nga dito lugod manubig sa, manubig sa amo nga ginbubungto sa tinago kay ang kahilarom sa tubig di sa ginpapatudnan sa simbahan tubtub sa irok kung tumindog ang tao so maybe no, um, yung illnesses na pwedeng uh, and yung health no i mean bahagi naman yun ng very general no na, na concept natin ng uh, health uh, well-being no ng, ng mga native so they were practically um um conscious no dito sa, sa sa mga factors na ito thank you thank you dr Costello. i'm, I'm always amazed uh, seeing transcripts like this that still have the spanish orthography of, of you know in in communicating the local language it's still a spanish uh, form of, of spelling um uh, yes Mars, actually meron akong gustong i-share um na isang na isa pang document Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na 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 um ano not this one. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na um uh what do you call this limitation ng 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 research ng research but um 
recently dahil sa um, exposure natin sa archives here in Spain, may mga lumilitaw na mga bagong dokumento. This is very interesting. This is a document in 1753, actually 1740s to 1750s. So, mid 18th century about uh, the um, actually ano siya um, it was a parang debate siya kung ang late ba ay gagawing dalawang ihiwalay ba ang katbalogan at ang ang karigara magkakaroon lang ba ng isang isang uh, capital um, because nakaka ang nakakatuwa dito um, merong parts na Ano to, 500 pages na dokumento. Pero meron mga parts written in in the vernacular. So, halimbawa, um, ayan, di ko alam kung nababasa ninyo, pero ito, testigos, tungod san pag tumangno, san sugo nga na... So, really, I mean, I, I need time to trans, transcribe and, you know, these documents, pero it, it this one is written in the vernacular, um, Bungtos alang-alang. In, it, it, they were talking about the different um, uh, conditions ng mga bungtos in Leyte and some parts in summer in the mid-18th century because they were trying to decide kung isa lang ba yung magiging capital for the provincia de Leyte because at that time it, was, it consisted of both the island provinces of Leyte and Samar. So tapos meron dito yung mga tributos, ilan na yung mga ilan yung inhabitants per bungto and marami dito uh, may ilang parts dito na written in the vernacular so and this was in the late and sorry second half of 18th century so yun relatively uh, more recent or in the middle of, of a period of spanish colonization a very very important and beautiful uh, manuscript um thank you dr costello for sharing uh, these materials um do we have other questions from our attendees uh, let me just uh, pick up on the discussion of toponyms a while ago in the pre-recorded conversation, and Dr. Borinaga also touched upon it uh, earlier. Um, it's also one interesting uh, topic uh, in the study of history. The place names, indeed, they're very uh, they they can point to certain. Um, aspects of, of our history. Uh, Dr. Costello and Professor Yi discussed the toponyms that are of Spanish origins, for example, and how the names of parish priests are used in naming certain towns. Um, aside from tracing the origin of, of toponyms, in what other ways are place names uh, significant? Uh, I'm reminded, for example, by uh, Dr. Borinaga's surmisal of certain toponyms, uh, aside from Tacloban and Cancabatoc, of, of uh, toponyms of a barangay or, or a place smaller than uh, the scale of a town like Kasiroman and Kataisan. Um, Dr. Burinaga, could you please share about Kasiroman, especially that we are nearing the commemoration of Yolanda? What are your speculations about this toponym? Well, uh, I, I, I believe that uh, Kasiroman uh, was, was the old name of, uh, of uh, San Jose district. Uh, it was named San Jose after, after the 1897 uh, uh, deludes, basically, uh, parang uh, Yolanda, 1897 Yolanda. It was still Casiroman. And then in the 193 census, it was already San Jose. So uh, perhaps uh, the, the, the change, uh, it, was the, it was the first... Uh, Settlement in Tacloban that was named after a saint, San Jose. But uh, I, I, in, in, in one of my articles, I said if it, the name was retained, Kasi Roman, then uh, it would not have really attracted a lot of settlers. That area would not have attracted a lot of settlers. But anyway, uh, what happened in 1897 happened again in 2013. Same area was ravaged by. That's why it was. It did not have houses uh, in 1897. The area because through historical time, it seems it had it had always been. Uh, it it had always been an area that was hit by uh, storm surges or um, tidal waves. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. It's uh, a dark place. You know? Yes, exactly. Um, 
also very uh, interesting how you know certain pieces of our history which are we are not or we have not been familiar with before and later turn up you know make us realize indeed the importance of, of history and how certain things uh, could repeat and uh, you know the possibility of avoiding them like in this particular case how toponyms could point to a cataclysm in a particular area and you know had we known that speculation before it would have it would have helped us uh, determine certain spaces in the city that are less vulnerable. Um, do we have any more questions or, or thoughts from our attendees? We, we actually have comments on the comment section, but, but these are more like uh, uh, sharing of, of, of their thoughts uh, and, and ideas. Uh, our panelists, do you want to share another point or uh, just like uh, okay, I'll, I'll, uh, uh, the, related to the question on Bongto, why why is it O? And uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, in Bai Bai and in our speech, we only had three vowels, A, E, and U. A, I, U. So, and the, the early in the early years, uh, the the Spanish chroniclers wrote. O as O because O is a hard vowel for Spanish and A is the hard vowel and so, and so, so the, the way we, the way we pronounce it was it was virtually letter O in the early years and it seems uh, uh, in a, old Sanchez dictionary uh, it, it was not uh, my, my belief is that it was not Sanchez who actually, Father Sa Mateo Sanchez, who compiled the Visayan to Spanish section. I believe it was uh, it was Father Isguera. Father Isguera was uh, was assigned in Carigara. Was actually born in the Philippines and he knew the intricacies of the language. So he started introducing letter U for Bungto, B O U. But uh, in uh, Artigas actually uh, and the, the early the early members of the Sanghiran ng ng uh, Bisaya the the uh, Academy of Bisayan Language they actually went to the extent of just using uh, a i and u as the vowels and, and it is very prevalent in Artigas's uh, uh, Resenia de la Provincia de Leyte. He basically went back to the <laughs> to the spellings of Salog, uh, Haro. It's not Haro, but Salog, but uh, Kangara or something like that. Uh, but uh, it it did not uh, it did not prosper. We still. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, recently uh, there there was a meeting a lot, about ten years ago on. Uh, how do we deal with our Visayan uh, orthography? And it, it looks like uh, if if it is in before the last before the last uh, last letter, it should be written as U, not O. Mm. Interesting, sir. Interesting, because yon um I share ko alit yung ano. Also because hindi lang din siya sa dictionary. Also because yung halimbawa yung petitions mismo they use the term bongto with o like oh, yeah, yeah. like this one ginbo bongto mm. so mismo yes, yes. the the natives sila mismo the natives in the 19th century they used and this was the this was the i mean i i think it it ganito po yung kanilang um, the way they they spelled it in the in the official documents kaya yun din yung ginamit ko na Although, tama kayo sir, kasi dito naman sa may area ng Tanawan, uh, dun sa petition naman for a separate pueblo na supposedly ang pangalan ay Takuranga, bungto naman with a U. Yeah. So talagang interchangeable yung uh, in, in, in the 19th century. But I had to choose just one. And so, yun, ginamit ko yung O with an O because of the dictionaries, early dictionaries. Anyway, all the old documents until that document, for instance, there was no letter K yet. It was Rizal who actually insisted that we we should be using letter K 
and Bonifacio actually started using K for ka katipunan. So, but before that, it's all letter C. <laughs> I see. A very uh, a nuanced um, discussions on, you know, how uh, linguistics plays a role in really understanding uh, history as well. So the multidisciplinarity of, of knowledge and, and uh, uh, research. Um, do we have any more thoughts to be shared by our panelists? Siguro may 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 lang ako na share sir. Baka yes. may mga nakikinig sa atin na interesado sa local history. Um, halimbawa kung kung interesado kayo, there are um, digital materials in the archives na pwedeng na uh, na pwedeng magamit. Pero kailangan lang talaga ng Spanish at Spanish paleography, you know, early documents. Pwede na tayong we can go beyond the traditional sources of like, for example, Blair and Robertson or Sina Father Cherino. Pwede na tayong pumunta dun sa mga archival official sources. Like halimbawa, this one, this was a uh, tis, uh, testimonio nung creation ng mga encomiendas, mga unang encomiendas sa Pueblos de Leyte, Haro, Taytay, Sampotan, Ipalo, in La Provincia de Leyte. And this was in 1711. Uh, meron din, like this one, this is a document, um, uh, six. This was in seven. Sorry, in sixteen thirty-three, early seventeenth century. This is about the encomienda naman of uh, Barugo. So makikita natin yan dito. Um, where is that? Um, de la encomienda de Indios nombrada Baro, Barugo. So marami actually baru, maraming mga um, old towns na pwede nating balikan yung yung kanilang sources. So um, baka may mga nakikinig lang sa atin na I don't know uh, local officials na interesado sila maybe you know if you can if we can um, start with you know small uh, well at least yung mga initial compilations of historical documents about our towns or, or about our parishes we can start from these early documents na yung creation the creation of the encomiendas and then we proceed with yung mga erecciones or yung mga foundation of towns um, so yun, para lang ma-compile natin yung mga local histories natin. So merong ganitong mga documents. So and then I can, we can discuss more about these kung interesado po kayo. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, before we close the forum, may mga pahabol na question eh, pero I'm just gonna ask them one after the other because they're still about linguistics. Very interesting how our attendees are very interested in, you know, the linguistic side of historiography. Um, from our, in the Q&A box, an anonymous attendee is asking, in the documents shown by Dr. Costello, they used sinin or sin. When did we start ha or hin? And a comment from the comment section on Facebook is from a sister professor, Pototanon. He says that quite far from the area in focus, but are the Sama Abaknon also mentioned in late Samar historiography? Maybe I, I, I need to ask for Dr. Borinaga or uh, Monsignor Urbina's help dun sa questions. I am not very confident answering the, those two questions. Uh, Sama Abaknan is, uh, is something else, but uh, at least it has already been mentioned that it is a separate uh, language. As for uh, letter H, uh, hini, hini, uh, so after after Kankabatok became the capital, Tacloban became a capital. It's actually based on the Tacloban dialect. I don't know, but uh, it it is actually S. In Aboyog, uh, the southernmost, it is S, and in uh, Katarman, it is S. Sini, Siton, so, something like that. It is only in Tacloban where it is he, and uh, it's not. Uh, he is not yet found in the 1711 Sanchez Dictionary. As uh, so, uh, my my time my time frame is that it this was a Tacloban dialect, which became popular after Tacloban uh, or Kankabatok became was made capital of Leyte. I see. Um, so, Actually, actually sir, ako may, may question po. What are the recent studies on the Leyte Samar uh, languages and the different dialects? Of course, yung language, no, it keeps evolving through time. Mm -hmm. So for sure, meron ng mga iba't ibang mga dialects within the Samar Leyte language na na, na, na form. 
there's actually a paper in uh, published in Leti Summer Studies which mentioned the dialects. There's Karigara dialect and uh, Abuyog and uh, Katbalogan so, dialect this, this... and Tacloban dialect. Pero yung old um, Leti Summer, yung Leti Summer Studies journal, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, in, uh, there, there's one article there uh, about the the dialects of of the of the language. Language. I believe uh, we, we also have in the room Assistant Professor Efmer Agustin of the Division of Humanities in UP Tacloban. Uh, Sir Efmer, would you like to share your thoughts on this question about recent studies on the language of Leyte Samar? I wonder if he's still in the room. I saw him like uh, 13 minutes ago. Yeah, he's still here. Maybe he can type if he cannot uh, use his audio. He's typing in, in the chat box. Hey. <laughs> what about Monsignor? Do you have thoughts, Monsignor, on the language question? You're on mute. The, 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 the Sanghiran is the official name of the Sanghiran is Sanghiran San Bilisaya. San, San, mm -hmm. no, San. So it's actually San, actually. I think there's a more uh, common. Uh, uh, you usage here in this region is the S actually. Uh -huh. It's only recent that we have been using H here in the Eastern Leyte and Eastern Samar. Eastern Samar and then Eastern Leyte. It's That's very interesting how you know this part of Leyte, the eastern northeastern side of Leyte uses H instead of S. Uh, so from Samar, mostly many places use Sin, right? And then at some point in Abuyog, they use S instead of H. Actually, Professor Agustin is from Abuyog, so we're excited to uh, hear what he thinks <laughs> about this. Because <laughs> I remember a conversation with him before. I'm not. I'm just not sure if he's able to turn on his audio. There's a comment here. Uh, Han, San, etc. Shorter and more common words that mark clauses. Uh, from Anika William Magonsha. Yeah, and uh, her her previous comment, Mars, is uh, the clitic cues in Warai are affected by habit mm -hmm. of the tongue and efficiency of speaking. Yeah, yes. but it's, you know, what's interesting about what was just said is that uh, what I thought, you know, like Han, Hin, diba? Uh, what mm -hmm. I thought was the, uh, the more dominant, I mean, you know, more, I don't know, uh, is, is actually minority pala. I mean, you know, uh, it's a more recent uh, mm. development than than the S, the Sun, uh, which from my, I mean, I mean, picking up on what Danica has said, uh, parang for me it's difficult to say. Sun, Sin, you know, I I would personally have difficulty, but that's because of what I'm used to, right? I mean, uh, Professor Agustin said uh, the old records use Sin and Sun, so yeah, the, in the old dictionaries it's basically. Uh, sun, sin, something like that. And another peculiar thing about Tacloban is that uh, the, the, we accent in the third syllable. Abukai, Sagkahan, Kawayan, something like that. It should be Abukai, Sagkahan. Uh, but uh, we, we, we accent that in the third syllable. Maybe. Very <laughs> interesting, like... Dr. Borinaga, because recently I, I saw this map of, of Tacloban and there the word Kankabatok is stressed on the third syllable uh, on the fourth syllable, kan kabatok, but the way we say the word now, indeed, it, it's stressed on on the third syllable. Yeah, a very interesting uh, reflections on uh, the role of geography in a way, you know, in in uh, morphology. Not only you know, because I, I read before from certain articles that uh, the weather of a particular place does affect uh, the speech sounds that are that can be produced. And in this case, I'm thinking that uh, the recent development in or the recent morphology from Sin to Hin is because relatively this area of our region, Tacloban, is quite isolated, I would say, right? It's because it's sheltered. So I'm just not sure. Those are just uh, speculations. Uh, Monsignor or Bina? Yeah, I would like to add that in our, I think in our local language, if you, use, if you use a word as a proper noun, the accent is changed, for example, no? There's a body in 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 uh, in 
in Dagam, it's Kabuluran, which is actually the Warai, it's the, the place where there are many Bulod, no? but it's, the people uh, pronounce it as Kabuluran. So the accent has been changed. When, we, when you use uh, it as a proper noun, I think there are other examples which I cannot think of, but uh, there are other places, uh, words that have been changed into proper nouns, names of places, so the accent has been changed. Anyway, that's an, an observation only. Thank you, thank you, uh, Monsignor. And, and Ramon Aguilos also here adds to the conversation by confirming that, you know, the, the how common the S is. He says that he saw a picture of the provincial capital of Leyte with its marquee it's sa- using san. the word San, the Lawigan San, san Leyte. Lawigan San Leyte. Yeah. Yeah. I am actually but, uh, consulting right now the Arte de la Lengua Bisaya de la Provincia de Leyte by in sixteen um, in the seventeenth century, but yeah, published in the Sanchez. middle mid mid eighteenth century already. And really, dito. Sin, sin and sun, you own uh, you own yeah. gamet. So mm. um siguro um related to uh Dean Arintosh uh, um comment about uh you know yung um yung dating no of of, of these um of the, the way how uh what I uh use uh sin and sun. So it's here. But, but recently uh, nowadays I think we have already we there's already a distinction between sa and han. Mm. Now, in, in for example, mm. well, mm. I'm, I'm talking about our translation, the the, lit, the liturgy, you know, what the 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 word, the local version of, of the language that we use at mass. So we use sa, for example, to refer to, for example, mm. himaya sa Dios, mm. because han is possessive. For us, han is possessive. No, himaya han Dios. It is different from Himaya Sadios. Ah. So that's that's already the distinction now. So I think we're happy to have that distinction because uh, it's it's clear for us, no, the expression because Han is already possessive, no. So that's that's just a, a, a recent development for us. No? So so the glory of God versus glory, glory to, to God. Himaya Dios is glory of God. Uh-huh. Yeah, glory versus to glory to God. Maya Sadios, yes. Okay. So oh. Sa is really is is more two, no? Mm. And that's that's uh just, just a distinction that, that we are happy of, no, because of the, the, the use sun. So we limited sa to this to well to refer to two, no? Two. Yeah. Uh thank you, Monsignor. Um and, and I'm very lucky actually to have uh, seen the materials you have and then Dr. Borinaga, sometimes I would look him up on Facebook to, you know, uh, see the posts again that, that he published before. In my thesis, for example, I've been uh, looking at the materials he shared on Facebook and of course, uh, Professor Urbina. So very valuable materials you have. And But, you know, there's still so much to, to discover and Dr. Costello is privileged to actually uh, be able to uh, have access to the archives in Spain. And then we hope that uh, more people could access uh, these documents because uh, these are these constitute our history, uh, our story. Um, so I guess we could uh, close the forum at, at that point. Um, uh, thank you very much to our very curious attendees um, and, and to our panelists, of course. Now to liven up the gloomy weather um, this afternoon, gloomy uh, at least where I am now in Tacloban, uh, uh, we, may we present uh, the performance Alibang Bang by Rosary Jasmine Padilla.
that Miss Rosary Jasmine Padilla, by the way, is an alumna of the BA Communication Arts Program of UP Tacloban, and uh, she was singing at the Butterfly Garden in in the campus of of UP Tacloban. Now, at this point, may we request the Dean of the University of the Philippines, Visayas Tacloban College, to share her message. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Patricia B. Arinto. Uh, everyone, colleagues and friends. Um, let me first of all uh, express my uh, appreciation to our guest speaker, uh, Dr. Ross Costello, uh, for accepting our invitation to talk about her essay on the transfer of uh, latest center or capital from uh, Karigara to Tacloban in the 19th century. In this forum, uh, in celebration of the 26th anniversary of the Leyte Samar Heritage Center, or LSHC. Uh, her work is an exemplar of the kind of work on Eastern Visayan history and culture uh, that the LSHC and uh, UP Tacloban as a whole aims to promote and uh, to undertake more of. Uh, I would also like to thank the other members of uh, our panel this afternoon, Assistant Professor Dakila Yi, uh, who interviewed uh, Dr. Costello in the recorded conversation we listened to this afternoon and posed insightful questions that enabled us to appreciate her essay better. Um, Professor Borinaga, uh, who shared very interesting additional notes uh, on the transfer of the capital of Leyte from Carigara uh, to Tacloban, uh, including uh, the drawn out no, uh, process of uh, the transfer itself. Uh, as well as uh, toponyms or place names. Um, and uh, Monsignor Gilbert Urbina uh, for his ruminations uh, on the geographic, topographic, religious, and uh, political and uh, socioeconomic factors uh, that led uh, to the transfer. Uh, and of course, uh, Assistant Professor Mars uh, Briones, our host this afternoon, uh, the moving spirit behind Bati Iupi Tacloban, uh, which is co-hosting this forum under its Kaagi Kabilin uh, Kultura series, uh, and himself an, uh, an art historian. Um, this afternoon's forum has been very stimulating uh, and enlightening, and uh, for me, uh, heartwarming uh, too, no? in two ways at least. Uh, first, I found it heartwarming to hear uh, snatches of the exchange uh, in Waray. Uh, I mean, you know, to talk in a scholarly way about the towns we grew up in, lived in, or at least visited, um, uh, but in our own language, okay, somehow makes the study uh, so much more exciting, no, and uh, quite visceral, uh, really, you know. Uh, and as Dr. Costello mentioned, we have these vernacular concepts like bongto and kaagi, you know, which embody our worldview. And uh, this is a very, this is something to celebrate, no, a, a contribution. Uh, so essentially, in talking about the local, uh, we are in fact uh, contributing, no, to to the global, no, to the international. Uh, uh, um, body of knowledge no, uh, uh, on, on history and culture. Uh, secondly, I am gratified to see uh, uh, that the forum has drawn a good mix uh, uh, of uh, UP Tacloban faculty, staff, and students from different curricular programs, uh, not just the humanities uh, and social sciences, uh, but also management and uh, the natural sciences and mathematics. Um, Colleagues from UP Luilo, uh, alumni and friends uh, who are culture and heritage uh, studies advocates and champions, uh, like Monsignor Aguilos uh, and others in the in the audience. No, uh, I see uh, among the alumni, I see contemporaries. I mean, meaning my contemporary, meaning people who went to UP Tacloban uh, the same time I did. You know, some thirty years ago. Uh, to me, you know, this uh, interest no, in forums like this um, on local history and culture is an auspicious sign uh, of the support for uh, the kind of work that the latest Summer Heritage Center has started uh, over the last 26 years, uh, building on previous studies and uh, institutional programs uh, outside of UP. Uh, and the work uh, that the latest Summer Heritage Center can, should, 
and will do uh, in the coming years uh, in partnership with scholars in the region, uh, the country, and other parts of the world. Uh, this forum is one of three events in celebration of uh, LSHC's 26th uh, anniversary. You know? The second uh, is the Hisgot Kalibungan Digital Poster uh, Contest, Digital Poster Making Contest, uh, the winners of which uh, we will be announced shortly after my, after my message uh, as part of this afternoon's forum. Uh, and the third event uh, is the airing uh, later this week uh, of a pre-recorded artist's talk, very short, something like 10 minutes, I think, or less, uh, by local artist uh, Archie Zabala about the latest Summer Heritage Center door, Porta, uh, which is a beautiful uh, sculptural piece, no? a beautiful piece of sculpture, a bar-relief bar sculpture. Uh, and uh, so I hope you watch out for that. No? It will be aired later this week uh, on our Facebook pages. Um, so again, uh, thank you very much to all of you, uh, both speakers and listeners, interlocutors all, uh, for this lovely conversation this afternoon uh, on our Bongto, our town, our hometown, our homeland. Uh, I think this is a continuing conversation uh, on many things that we have a common interest in um, and many things we hold dear. Uh, and I look forward to hearing from all of you again. Maupang adlaw atong natanan. Dao mga salamat, Dean Arinto. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, at this point, may we call the officer in charge of the Leyte Samar Heritage Center, Professor Irma Artan, to present the certificates of appreciation to our interlocutors. It is my honor and privilege to as officer in charge of the latest Summer Heritage Center to present the certificates of appreciation to our interlocutors. Uh, may I request Ms. Marvi to show the certificates? Uh, I am really sorry because my my internet is not connection is not very good, but nonetheless, I'll try my very best to read the certificate. Uh, first, we present the certificate of appreciation to Dr. Ross A. Costello for serving as resource person, guest interlocutor in the online forum Bungto, the transfer of latest and latest center from Karigara to Tacloban in the 19th century, which is part of the UP Tacloban latest summer heritage centers 26th anniversary celebration with the theme Porta Pathways to Promoting Cultural, Historical, and Environmental Awareness in Eastern Visayas. Given this 25th day of October 2021, it is signed by Mars Edwinson Joti Briones, the project leader of the LSHC 26th anniversary celebration. Uh, yours truly, and of course, Dean Patricia Biarinto, the Dean of the college. Okay, so thank you very much, Dr. Costello. Next, we have uh, the Certificate of Appreciation for Professor Dakila Kim Piyi for serving as resource person in the online forum. It's also signed by uh, Professor Mars Briones, uh, yours truly, and the Dean. Thank you, Professor Yi. Next. Uh, the same certificate of appreciation is presented to Dr. Rolando O. Borinaga uh, for serving as resource person also in this online forum. And it's also signed by Professor Mars Briones and myself and Dean Arinto. Thank you very much, Dr. Borinaga. And last but not least, uh, we have our certificate of appreciation to Monsignor Gilbert G. Urbina for serving as resource person in the online forum Bungto, the transfer of latest center from Carigara to Tacloban in the 19th century, signed by Professor Mars Briones, myself, and Dr. Patricia B. Arinto. Thank you very much, uh, Monsignor Urbina. Salamat, uh, hayo nga tanan.
Damang salamat, Professor Tan, and damang salamat to our interlocutors. Uh, thank you very much. Now we have come to the point uh, of the program where we will be launching the exhibition His Got Kalibungan uh, Digital Posters. Now the His Got Kalibungan Digital Poster Making Contest, part of the activities of the anniversary celebration of LSHC, seeks to promote and disseminate the outputs of the His Got Kalibungan online distance series to a larger public and to enhance public participation in the promotion of environmental awareness in the region and beyond. Intended for senior high school and undergraduate students in Region 8, the contest has provided the participants venue to showcase their talents and skills in making information-based learning materials. Each entry is designed to encourage the audiences, especially children and the youth, to learn to learn from and to act in favor of environmental conservation. And each of the digital posters focuses on one of the following themes, which come from the Hisgut Kalibungan episode. Uh, sustainable fisheries, biodiversity conversation, solid waste management, climate resilience, and sustainable tourism. We are excited to announce our winners for the Hisgut Kalibungan digital poster making a uh, contest. Uh, but before that, we'd also like to thank our judges who, who've done a wonderful job in, in uh, selecting our set of winners. We have Ms. Marilu Morales, instructor of the Division of Humanities in UP Tacloban, Ms. Rachel Rescordado, project officer of the Giwan Development Foundation Incorporated, and Mr. Jericho Sandino Aliposa, a lecturer in UP Tacloban. Now our winners for the Hisgut Kalibungan Digital Poster Making Contest are in third place, Pearl Andrea M. Braga, Senior High School student of Eastern Visayas State University. In second place, Anakin Jade Dakot, senior high school student of Eastern Visayas State University. The theme is biodiversity conservation. And finally, our first place goes to Marianne Faith O. Aviso, an undergraduate student of St. Scholastica's College, Tacloban Incorporated. The theme she chose for this poster is climate resilience. Huge congratulations to our winners and of course uh, to our uh, participants as well for joining the Hiskut Kalibungan Digital Poster Making Contest. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsor for the competition, Anwarai Party List, and to all those who have been uh, helpful in, in this particular uh, endeavor. Now we're going to launch the Hiskut Kalibungan exhibition of digital posters with this teaser. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, here it is. I just uh, posted the link to the online exhibition of Hiskut Kalibungan digital posters in the chat box. So you uh, may please uh, check it out. Um, before you leave, uh, may I just announce that the winners, uh, to claim your prizes, uh, we will be coordinating with you via email. And as uh, promised in the registration form and in our uh, PubMats, we will also be giving certificates of attendance to our participants. But for you to receive your certificate, you will first need to fill in the post-activity uh, evaluation form, which will be posted in a while in the chat box. 
Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for taking part in, in this very important conversation. Uh, I hope this forum has inspired many of you to be more interested in local histories. Uh, indeed, we, when we uh, think about the local, we become empowered to uh, take ownership of our history and really come to uh, appreciate our role in understanding our historical past our kaagi, what we have gone through. Uh, indeed, an aton ginagian, as Dr. Costello has pointed out uh, earlier. We'd also not like to miss, of course, this opportunity to have a photo up with everyone. So uh, to those who are able and to those who are willing, please turn on your video. Okay. Um, please hold a really nice smile. <laughs> You don't know when your photo will be captured, so maybe in the next 30 seconds, keep smiling. Okay. All right. Everyone looks um, good. Thank you very much thank once so again. Much. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the UP Naming Mahal. Thank you.